Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the Fire Emblem 12 Pick My Units Run finale. Remember to subscribe if you like what you see and let's get into it. First thing is first, ladies and gents, I'm just going to start the chapter without explaining anything because I just... This endgame is probably the most painful endgame in the series. But I also think it's one of the best because of its atmosphere. So I'm going to hit skip here and let's just take in the music for a minute. Yeah, so as you can tell, it's very dreary. And you know, in most endgames in the series, you know, it's like, do 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 ka -siva, you know, Greek stuff like, oh my god, I'm so hot, I'm about to beat the final boss, but I think this chapter is a bit unique because it's kind of a depressing final chapter. You know, you got the clerics here, and unless you do a lot of things perfectly, uh, they're goners. So, there's that. And it's also, it's kind of an oppressive tone, and this is the most oppressive endgame in the series, how about that? Because you have dragons literally everywhere. Wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be here with you. It's not possible to beat this chapter legitimately. You cannot take on all the dragons, recruit all the clerics, and do it without warp and rescue shenanigans. I mean, I'm sure it's possible, but I tried my damnedest in my original playthrough, and it uh, wasn't working out. And I had not trained Marth in my original playthrough, so Medius doubled and killed him. So there's that too. But enough stalling. Let's get into it. So, last run, my last Arcanea run, my Iron Man, I felt guilty because I didn't really have a plan for Tomas in the end game because I was going to have Caesar kill the final boss, but then Tomas just stood there. So I think we're going to have Tomas do what Tomas does best. Game. The thing is, you cannot kill Medius unless these clerics are out of the way first. So, and I do not have any of their lovers drafted, and you need their lovers to talk to them. So, yeah. And there's not even a battle theme playing when you kill these guys, it's just dreary music. And I really like Medius' theme here too, I'm sure you'll see it in a sec. So, yep. And then, we'll have you move all the way up. A new Tomas. And he's just gonna go on a cleric battering spear right now. Because we need them out of the way. The new staff, everybody. The new staff. Uh, Tomas is doing what he does best gaming. Let's go. And then I think I'll anew again. Perfect. And now, time for the final Brave Axe. Goodbye, Maria. It's been fun. Da -da. All right. And we can just leave that one for next turn. Unfortunately, Tomas will have to bury the Dragon Wasteland by himself, but I'm sure he'll survive. I'm sure he'll survive. So I'll put Marth right here. And he's in range of three dragons, but they're easily distracted by other units, so it's not too big of an issue. Just put board with the board cordex right there. Luke right behind him. And Caesar right there. Mathis goes up. And Roderick right here. And that is all the unit movements I need for this turn. I think I moved everyone. Unfortunately, by the way, this theme, by the way. Very good, I like it a lot. I have revived, foolish humans. I will leave none alive. Yeah, that was bad voice acting on my part. I'm sorry, usually, yeah. I think I did a better better than Medius voice for my math is solo, but I can't remember what it was. Anyway, Thomas died living. He died doing the thing he loved living, gaming. So there's that. So now these guys are gonna go for S just like I want them to. So that's uh, very nice. And you'll notice that Marth has his falchion sword now. One final S level up. Uh, using S this run was really fun. Alright, board takes out this one. 
and hits him up with the board Cordex. My favorite. All right, another level up for board. It's hardly relevant at this point, but okay. He did end up capping speed, so good for him, I guess. And now Marth takes on this one. And goodbye. Physicking up that one. Fine, I guess. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, these dragons all have really ridiculous stats. And after turn two, they ambush spawn forever. And I mean forever. If you actually, you cannot trudge your way to Medius at all. You just cannot. He's guarded by an infinite wall. So if you don't defeat him before turn two, uh, GG kid. And now, we're gonna have Caesar play his part by getting Sister Lena out of the picture. It's unfortunate that we have to kill Math's sister, but uh, you know I actually want to win the run, so we're doing it. Oh, Julian. It's unfortunate, but uh, it's what must be done. And now, ladies and gents, I'm gonna have Matha save right here. Light and shadow. And now, ladies and gents, I actually need to get a crit with Falchion to kill Medius this turn. So, yeah, let's see. No crit. All right, ladies and gents, I'm gonna cr I'm gonna cut the game because we actually need to crit Medius. So I'll be right back. I'm sorry. All right, ladies and gents, Marth just got a crit there, which is perfect. And now I think we'll be able to finish off with Luke. Oh no, ladies and gents, I can't finish him off with Luke. What will I do, ladies and gents? What will I do? I, I, I don't think I can kill Medius now. I don't think I can kill if only... Ladies and gentlemen, I've been obscuring a very special fact from you for this entire episode now. Before I started the chapter, I went to the Lunatic Stat Booster Shop and bought two power drops. Have I been defeated so easily? Is this the power of Naga's binding shield? No, this human's the light is only a brief respite. So long as evil lurks within the hearts of man, should this accursed shield be lost, we shall rise from the depths of hell. Do not ever forget. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Shadow Dragon Medius taken out by Night Yubello. All right, what are you gonna get? Very cool. Map, clear. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Fire Emblem 12 Maniac Mode Pick My Units Run. I don't really care about this. Let's just see the campaign summary. So, ladies and gents, I think during the credits of this game, I'll reflect upon my journey. Because it's been a while. It's been about... It's been a run, ladies and gents. It's going to be a, it's been a run. So, I think Fire Emblem 12 is a very interesting game with several highs and lows. You have some of the tightest... It's weird to say controls in the context of Fire Emblem, but like... The, U, the UI is so tight, you can get everything done so quickly. It's just a really fun game to play. Most of the maps are good at least, but then there are the maps like, you know, the Wyverns, there the, there's that desert one, you know, there's Hardens one with just a million reinforcements and Fortify spam all over. I played this game on Maniac, I'm gonna be, I'm telling you this straight up, I don't think I'm ever gonna play this game on Lunatic, it just sounds too infuriating to me, they just made so many changes, like, George's range is, an, is his entire range, so you need to, like, get hammered without ever entering George's range while fighting the Cavaliers. It's pretty interesting stuff. But I, I don't know if I like the SNES version or this more, because this game has more characterization. I didn't read any of the supports ever. Uh, but 
even with Chris, like, if you just pay attention to the characters you actually care about, like, Chris's support with Mathis in my Mathis essay, I was just mostly focused on what Mathis said, and that made him a more interesting character. So, I think it really... Chris, I mean, people say Chris ruined it for them, but I don't really think Chris ruins anything if you don't play it for the story very much, because... Like, I've played this entire game pretty much without Chris and just using crappy units on Maniac. Like, I I'm not playing on Lunatic, but don't get me wrong, Maniac is not easy by any standards. Or standards. I had to try at these chapters a ton to get down the right strategy. And I, I think I would... I, I, th I think I would recommend it over the original. I think I would. Because while the, the original technically has a better story because it doesn't have Chris, this game is just so interesting with the weapon forges and like the lunatic stat booster shop who you give those to and the reclassing like i think you bellow ironically has more defense growth than any of the actual knights like roger and, and uh, doga so that made him interesting to use then again i had to grind him up like you'll see uh i missed it but chapter 10 there was probably like 200 turns or some shit final battle, yeah, like, turn 137. But it does have some degenerate stuff, like the freaking Ballista Spam and the Wolf Pack map, uh... And... I think actually removing the Star Shards growths from this game is a good thing upon reflection, because it allows for more interesting trading, like, in that one chapter, right, you know, I had to trade the Speed Shard around to double that Fire Dragon. Meanwhile, in Fire Emblem 3, I would have just grinded up speed, like, in a normal chapter, and I wouldn't have even needed to trade it around in the first place, so... It's, um, it has its highs and lows, but, yeah, and there are so many characters, like in Fire Emblem 3 I wouldn't really say there's a, a, a bad character, like pretty much everyone's usable, but let's go over the credits now. Luke, probably definitely the best unit of this run, he just one-rounded everything for the entire game, it was great. Roderick underperformed massively, I, I, I can't really, I don't really have anything to say about him. Cecil, only 64 battles, but she won most of them. She was so good. You know, like I said, she took out Garnef getting us Falcon. Her growths were, like, really good. Gordon, <laughs> uh, not in this run. So, yeah. Ryan, so Fire Emblem 12 is a very interesting game. Like, I think this is the least played game in the franchise. You could argue that's Thracia, but I feel like a lot of Westerners and new people have played it more than this because it has a reputation for, like, Oh, it's the hard game in the franchise. You gotta play Thracia. Plus, it's like Mecha's favorite, and he's the second most popular next to Ghast. But this game, I don't really feel like anyone cares about. And I just can't really say if it's deserved or not. I definitely think it's a game everyone should play once to see if they like it. Because the intense challenge, the intense thinking, is, uh... It's it's a good game design, but some of it's just really bad. Like that end game chapter there. If you didn't have warp again, if you didn't have the rescue staff, because in Lunatic you use the uh okay so Warren he didn't really do much. I just used him as a staff bot because the stats were so bad. But he was good at spamming fortify and rescue and stuff in the last couple of parts. So eh, he was fine overall. But any staff bot would be if you trained him. But I think the main thing is like. Because in the le this game is so cruel to beginners. Like I was able to kind of breeze through some of the chapters because I knew it was coming. But in the last, in the final chapter of this game when I first played it, I did not have Marth trained, so I had to like keep her setting until Cord of all units crit with the Halicter twice board. Uh, he was really good when Hammer spam was good because he starts with C axes, so I could just spam Hammer against the Armor Knights. But he kind of fell off near the end. He was still decent though. Like I used him to kill a couple enemies at the end, so you know, good unit overall. But I just, um, yeah, Fire Emblem 12 is a very, uh, Mathis, god tier, MVP of the run, you know it, we all know it. I think it's, uh, Riz, um, I just kind of sidelined him the whole time. I'm sorry to the guy who drafted Riz, but, like, he was just, at least Ubella had a good defense growth. I think Riz just would have been unworkable in the long term, were I to use him. So, yeah. I don't know. Like I said, I think Fire Emblem 3 is too easy, so I don't really have fun playing it, but this game, on the other hand, can be too cruel sometimes. You, be you below! 
Only 19 wins and 331 battles. That must be a record. Slayer of Medius, God tier unit. You below. Honestly, he saved my ass a few times. He's above a meme pick. I mean, he he's a still pretty big meme pick. Like he wouldn't have done anything had I elected not to grind him that one chapter, which like makes him a bad unit because grinding can make any unit good. But you know, you know what I mean. Surprisingly, came in useful for a couple parts there. But Fan Emblem Twelve, it's just um. So many garbage units is the main thing. Like, if you play this game, I'll, I got away with memeing Tomas because this was Maniac, but even barely memed Tomas, right? Like, in the Wolf Pack chapter, right? He still got doubled and died by everything, right? Like, I invested like 10,000 gold into him, gave him a bunch of good weapons and stat boosters. In Lunatic, I just don't think that's viable. Like, on Maniac, I think this game's pretty good. I like it a lot. Probably in my top three or top five in the series, but. On Lunatic, it's right, this game just, uh, like, if you don't use the good units on the high difficulty, I think it kind of sucks. Meanwhile, on Three Houses on Maddening, right, I got away with using Armor Knight Byleth and was still able to come out on that one, so I think, like, y you would never use Samuel in Lunatic on this game, you know? So that can kind of take some of the fun out of it. But I had a lot of fun with this. I thought it'd be painful at first, but I kind of liked the cast I ended up having. I definitely got closer to a lot of characters, you know? Caesar... I think Hunter is just a good class in this game, and because I made him a Hunter, he was good. It's like, I didn't get to Dark Mage Beam build him, but, you know. Because you saw the 9 move and the bow and arrows came in handy so much. Like, this game is definitely a very good game to be a horseman in, so thank you to whoever submitted Caesar. That was awesome. I used him in my Iron Man too, so I think I like Caesar a lot now. I think I'll use him too in the, uh, in the Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light Let's Play that's coming up, so probably... She danced. 10 out of 10. So. Oh, that's cute. They thanked all the staff on the Famicom game. That's nice of them. That's actually really nice of them, actually. Do remakes usually do that? I don't really play a lot of remakes. But yeah. Overall, I'd say it's a really good game. But it definitely has its downsides that are really, really what I would consider big downsides. Like, some people don't like the graphical art style. I didn't like it at first, but I've gotten used to it. But I can definitely see how people wouldn't really like that anymore. And are like, not even anymore these days. It can be kind of ugly, but I've gotten used to the art style. Like, when I think of Mathis, I think of his, like, 3D modeled, dopey looking ass head. I said this a couple times, but this game actually got me into Mathis. Because, <laughs> um... So, when I played this game blind, I played it on Maniac. And I saw that there was a Cavalier, and I was like, oh, my Roderick got really shitty level ups. Maybe you can replace him. And then he was either the same or worse than Roderick and everything. And I was like, god damn it, why? Why? <laughs> why do you, why are you here? So, like, I thought his face looked kind of funny, though, because I thought he looked really depressed. So I snapshotted that, you know, deep fried at Mathis moment. And then I deployed him as a cleric, and I just really, really ended up liking him. So that was fun. These guys, uh, apparently they're good. I've never used them. So yeah, yeah, they're guys. So there's, I, th I think there's a lot to say about Fire Emblem 12 overall. Overall, my favorite is still Binding Blade, but Beck, uh, we didn't use him much, but the chapter we did use him in was pretty good. He could use Worm Slayer at base that helped clear out the Ice Dragons initially. If I had used him long term instead of memeing Tomas, I'm sure he would have been good to find. Because he does start with a very high base speed, so I do appreciate that about him. So there's that. And I feel like I'm going in circles at this point, but Fire Emblem 12, my thoughts summarized. Um, yeah, I don't know. Leave a comment about Fire Emblem 12 if you want to talk about it. Like, I know the Mega... Mega leaves a lot of comments about the game, which I appreciate. It's interesting learning things new. I was wrong about Est, the best by far. Let's go, Est. Um, very interesting to learn new things about a game you already thought you knew a lot about. Uh, Dolph, I'm honestly surprised he survived his joint chapter. Same with Massalot, who's coming up. Like, I don't know how they survived. Um, yeah, Fire Emblem 12 is a game. And I have to say, I really really enjoyed the PMU. The format really made me think creatively. Quiet Bow, Tomas. 
died as he lived, gaming. God bless. Uh, he would have been utter shit had I not dropped a million gold to train him up. But, hey, that's Thomas Gaming, baby. Family Man Frost, uh, whatever. So, yeah, that's Fire Emblem 12, really. It's a good game. Yimmer, I kind of forgot he was in this game. Very relaxing credit theme, too. It like makes you feel like it's over. It's not really exciting. It's like, it's kind of calming, like, you did it. You beat the game. And I think that's appropriate for a game that's this hard. Like, you know, a lot of Fire Emblem themes are, like, victorious. Like, yeah, you won. Good job. Whoa. Whoa. But this is like, all right, you beat the game. But I think that's appropriate for a, a title like this. It's kind of... It's kind of a low-key game, if you know what I mean. Marth, I gave him the Rainbow Potion because I didn't want to be screwed out of killing Medius, and hey, what do you know, he actually did his job. Good for him. So that's that. And that's the Arcanea Chronicle. Finn. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Fire Emblem 12, New Mystery of the Emblem, Maniac, Take My Units, Run. Remember to subscribe if you like what you see. And I will see you for Fire Emblem 1, Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light, coming out on December 4th.